Hey, hi everybody. It's uh, Bill McPhee back with you. Um, welcome to Mental Wellness Today presents Recovery Blog with Bill McPhee. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, this is the uh, third new blog since uh, I started uh, doing longer blogs. Uh, today is actually uh, Friday the 26th of um, September. Uh, 2014 and uh, just wanted to check in with you uh, today uh, to uh, tell you to have a have a great weekend uh, I'm gonna be basically uh, just reading uh, uh, over the weekend uh, not, not too many things planned um, I think that um, in a previous blog I shared with you that uh, uh, I'm reading uh, a long road to freedom with uh, Nelson Mandela's uh, biography very interesting very long long book 650 pages, something like that. A lot of African names that are hard to present, uh, pronounce, but uh, a great, uh, a great read so far. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about you today about an article I found, and uh, the reason it stood out to me it was from the uh, from the uh, New Asia, uh, the NewsAsia.com, and uh, this uh, article was was based out of uh, Singapore. And it's about uh, a peer leadership program. And the reason I just wanted to uh, share that with you um, is because uh, I, I have a special heart for uh, Singapore. I actually used to live in Singapore when I was, ooh, what, 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 what maybe 20, 21. In, 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 I graduated from uh, an underwater skills program course at Seneca College in King City, Ontario. And that was a... Uh, underwater skills meaning a commercial diver so I already had scuba diving uh, scuba diving experience and everything but this was uh, a program where you learn to do commercial diving and you know deep sea diving basically and uh, when I was uh, on my 19th birthday I was on a plane to Singapore to look for work uh, in, in, in the oil field uh, in the diving profession and uh, so that would have been uh, when I was 19. That would have probably been around 1982 or something like that. So, anyways, when I got to Singapore, I really didn't know uh, anything. I'd never really traveled before, and uh, so it was kind of special that first place. I fell in love with the Asian people there, and I spent the year uh, working in the South China Sea as a commercial diver. But then uh, later on in life, uh, actually in 1990. Uh, 1997, uh, I started writing uh, a girl um, in Singapore uh, through through uh, you know you guys probably a lot of you probably know this but if you haven't uh, you know in one of my uh, videos I talk uh, all about how I I met my wife and different things like that but anyways I went to visit my wife my wife was uh, originally from the Philippines but she was working as a nanny in Singapore in 19 um, 1997. So uh, I went over there uh, for the second time in Singapore uh, and spent two weeks with my wife over there. And and uh, well, while she was working over there, she was working as a nanny over there. And uh, so that was my experience with Singapore. I really enjoyed it. Really uh, fell in love with the Asian culture, the Asian people, and everything like that. So I saw this uh, uh, this uh, news story come up on uh, on Asian dot uh, com. Uh, newsasia.com and uh, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd do that you know what uh, the one time uh, when I did uh, when I did go see my wife uh, because she was working I didn't spend all my time with her but I was actually doing some research for an article uh, when I was in Singapore on homelessness and what I found is you know it really really spoke to me in the fact that when I was in Singapore I was went to their mental health association that they had in and I started a conversation about homelessness and, you know, you know, tell me about your homelessness problem and, and different things like that here. And they looked at me and they, they, they looked at me like I, I was like a, an alien from outer space or something. And I said, well, what do you mean by homeless? What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean people are homeless? And so I talked, I said, you know, well, people living on the street, uh, you know, uh, panhandling, uh, just trying to survive, going to shelters. And, and, and she said, no, we don't have any homeless in, in Singapore. And basically what they do is, uh, because of that Asian culture thing, is that people really 
uh, stuck to their own and, and, and really helped out their relatives and always had a place to stay. Or, or So really in, in Singapore, homelessness wasn't a problem, which I was totally, totally amazed and totally shocked at uh, for that. Anyways, uh, along with the article, so talking about the article that came out, it was titled uh, Peer Leadership Program to Boost Recovery of Schizophrenia Patients. And you know what, I just want to make a, a statement here. Uh, and you know what, I, I, if you have a, a question or you want to uh, email me about this, I, I, I welcome that. My email is bmcfee at magpiemags.com. And because uh, in this, sometimes when you read articles and you read different things, you'll you'll find people calling, you know, reporters calling people with schizophrenia, schizophrenics, and and they'll say this schizophrenic and, and person and everything like that. So I just want to, you know, get your thoughts on that. I mean, we see it all the time. Send me an email and and, and tell me what you thought. Like, does it really bother you when when you see the word schizophrenic uh, relating to the people instead of saying somebody? Who suffers from schizophrenia or somebody who has schizophrenia rather than just saying schizophrenic. So you may hear some of this language uh, in this article, but I just wanted to, to let you know that that's uh, what goes on. So um, anyway, so this is uh, about peer leadership and it talks about uh, 80, 80, 88% of patients showed improvement in their social and psychological conditions after six weeks of participation. And uh, talks about Singapore. Uh, a novel study in which people with schizophrenia act as peer leaders to fellow patients in a support group like setting has yielded positive results in the self-esteem and motivation of those patients and has helped keep their condition in check. And this was a, a one and a half year study uh, uh, and uh, that involved uh, 122 patients. And they said that the results were promising and that 88% of people with schizophrenia uh, in the study showed an improvement in their psychological and social condition after just six weeks of this peer-led self-management program. And uh, so the researcher uh, Lai Zingwang, senior staff nurse at the IMH, uh, said that uh, the results suggested that the program was effective in supporting a patient's recovery by rebuilding hope, promoting practical wellness and maintenance and social support and helping patients feel empowered to take charge of their health. And you know what? Uh, so basically this was, uh, uh, she said that patients uh, with schizophrenia often suffer a lack of motivation and the program addresses that having its participants set in a recovery goal, such as maintaining a job, which they would work towards throughout the six week program. So. Basically, what that's saying is that the the, the peer to peer uh, group that that people have, and uh, sort of she mentioned about recovery and group therapy, and really what it's saying is that you know what medication medication is the foundation to getting back to reality. When you have serious psychosis and you're psychotic, you definitely have to you know get back to reality, and, and medication does that. However, it's the picking up of the pieces afterwards, and uh, uh, dealing with the negative symptoms, the lack of motivation, the lack of drive, the, the no energy, the, you know, the, the self-esteem issues, all that, that was mentioned in there. And uh, it, it's really, really true. And so these peer groups, we have peer groups here in North America as well, and they're very, very handy, very, 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 very uh, beneficial. I've heard that they're very expensive to run. That's some people's opinion, but I've heard that they, 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 they really work on the front line with people as far as getting them their medication, helping them maintain a, a place to stay and helping them uh, with their illness and, and all that. So really that psychosocial um, recovery model is, is very important. And for you, for those of you who are just joining us, I consider myself as a uh, recovery expert. And uh, my definition of recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anybody else but who you are today. And that's very, very important and that that uh, has a whole gamut and a whole program around that. So, you know what? I just wanted to let you read that. I just wanted to bring that. If you have uh, an article or uh, a story you want me to comment on, just feel free to uh, uh, send it to me. Or if you have a question on recovery, a uh, question on mental wellness or anything like that, I'd be happy to, to help you out and try to uh, answer that as best as I can for you. 
So uh, I'm going to end here and just tell you to have a great weekend. Uh, not sure when I'm going to be back, but I did tell you in another blog that I'm going to be interviewing um, um, bum, 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 what's it? Peter, Peter, Peter Stewart uh, will be here with us sometime shortly. Peter's a little bit under the weather. He has a cold. He was getting over the flu, uh, but I'm going to bring uh, Peter on the blog here and uh, we're going to have a conversation. I really have a lot of respect for Peter. He, he suffers from schizophrenia, but he's doing really well. He's got his life back together. He's going back to school right now. He's in school. Uh, he's he's got in shape. He's dropped some a lot of weight and and different things like that. As far as my weight, I I, I want to report to you that uh, uh, I'm still at around uh, 230. But I have really worked on changing my lifestyle and and really lately I've been really I've been walking a lot and uh, eating the right things and and uh, watching my portions and all that kind of stuff you have to do. Um, what else? I just want to mention that uh, as as Z Magazine in Canada, as Z Magazine in, in the U.S., uh, people are starting to get their summer issue now. Uh, they're they're getting that. They we were a little behind because of the printer this time, uh, but uh, those magazines are out. So if you're a subscriber to the magazine, should be in your mailbox uh, any day now. Other than that, I'm going to go and just want to tell you to have a great weekend. Uh, it's uh, really going to be a nice weekend here in uh, Fort Erie, Ontario, by Niagara Falls, Ontario. And uh, hopefully where you are, it will be a nice weekend as well. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. And remember, there is life after mental illness. Bye-bye.